The annexation of Ukraine is inevitable. Ukraine stands at a point of crucial importance for Russia on one side and all those who would seek to contain or challenge Russia on the other. For as long as Russia has existed with rivals to its west, it has sought to place distance between said rivals and its crucial heartlands. These heartlands are contained entirely within the European plain, a flatland which the west could theoretically funnel into full force with few natural barriers to stop them. The fall of the Soviet Union fractured Russia's historic imperial domain and has left it in its most geographically vulnerable state in centuries, still possessing a massive domain to oversee and protect with a relatively low population for its size and facing potential enemies across every border. Post-collapse, Russia sought reproachment with the West now that the ideological divide was seemingly torn down, but Russia questioned and felt threatened by Western expansion into their former domain, as well as by the continuing coldness that lingered in Russia-Western relations. Thus, it is, of course, its westernmost lands, its heartlands, which it is most concerned with protecting from what it recognizes as the encroaching West. Following the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia managed to maintain a hold over some of its breakaway states through economic, military, and political arrangements. But perhaps most important of all was Belarus, whose location allowed it to act as a buffer between Russia and much of the European Union. To regain Ukraine, or at least strategic parts of it, would further reinforce Russia's western defense and allow it to shift its focus elsewhere some believing that shift to be eastward toward challenging China and Iran for dominance in Asia, while others fear Russia's focus would turn toward the EU member states along the Baltic, threatening a direct war between Russia and Western Europe, in which Russia would then be in a more advantageous and secure position. Ukraine, however, instead of pursuing closer relations with Russia, has focused on Western alliance prospects instead. Russia, despite early hesitations, has since expressed its willingness to accept Ukrainian integration with the European Union, considering it the only natural direction for the country if it has in fact determined not to align with Russia. The EU is an economic rival but also a partner on the continent, and compromises have been achieved between the two powers before. Where Russia draws the line, however, is Ukraine's desire to join NATO, something which would place Western military assets within Ukraine and thus uncomfortably close to Russia's border. Russia may not be willing to let all of Ukraine go either, whether into NATO or the EU. South and eastern portions of Ukraine, including Crimea, are home to a population of some 6 million Russians, and while this population does constitute a large percentage of the overall population in each of their respective regions, in none of them but Crimea do they constitute an absolute majority. That being said, this Russian population in the south and east of Ukraine is extremely politically active, and unlike northwestern portions of Ukraine, are attempting to pull the country toward closer relations with Russia. The Russians regard these southeastern lands as historically theirs, and in reality they do share history. What we'd call Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine today first coming into existence as the loose union of the Kievan Rus in the late 9th century. Even then it was a rivalrous and internally divided state, and this ultimately led its land to be dominated by the invading Mongols. But the Rus principality of Muscovy would rise up and successfully reunite many of the Rus states under its leadership, giving rise to Russia proper. The lands of the Ukraine were not yet among the lands reunited by Russia, however, and they instead found themselves under the control of Poland-Lithuania in the northwest and the Turks to the south. So would they remain for roughly three centuries before the Ukrainian population rebelled against Polish-Lithuanian rule to unite with Russia instead, with whom they felt more familiar. In the eyes of Ukraine, they had brought themselves under the protection of an essential relative, while for Russia, they felt as though they had finally brought these long-separated Rus people back under the rightful guidance of a united Russia. And as such, efforts at Russification were taken up in Ukraine to reintegrate the state and do away with any foreign influences that might have taken root since its separation. This Russification proved successful in some regions, though in others only fueled Ukrainian resentment toward Russia and emphasized a sense of uniqueness to the Ukrainian identity as something wholly different from that of Russia. This resentment was only intensified by World War I, the Russian Civil War, the Great Famine, World War II, and the subsequent decades of Russo-Communist rule until the USSR's ultimate collapse. Attempts were made at rapprochement between Russia and the Ukraine, however, greater Ukrainian desires for integration with the West made clear that Russia could not depend upon the state's long-term cooperation in the pursuit of mutual security, and as relations between the two broke down, Russia opted to resolve its relationship and dependency upon Ukraine through alternative means. In the 2010s, upon Ukraine's pro-Russia government refusing to sign the European Union-Ukraine Association Agreement, protests broke out which escalated to the point of revolution which ousted the sitting president in favor of a more pro-Western replacement. In response, pro-Russian protests erupted across the south and east. Russia seized upon this opportunity to invade and annex Crimea, and lend support to other pro-Russian separatist regions in the east. Now confident of Ukraine's future as a part of the West, Russia is left with few options to both secure its border and bring what it considers historic and ethnically Russian lands back under its control. Thus, military force is now on the table. In a direct conflict between Russia and Ukraine, there is no question that Russia would emerge victorious. Russia boasts superior capabilities across every metric, 
On land, sea, or air, in population, in resources, in technology, Ukraine simply does not stand a chance. Certainly Ukraine has been bolstering their defenses in recent years in preparation for a worst case scenario, but still this does not even come close to leveling the playing field. The most often used arguments in defense of Ukraine's ability to fend off Russian conquest are twofold. Firstly are Ukraine's allies. It's assumed that should Russia initiate a direct invasion of Ukraine, the West would immediately spring into action in Ukraine's defense. Unfortunately for Ukraine, this does not appear to be the case. The United States, fresh off the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan and the failure of that two decade long conflict, is the most hesitant it has been in decades to involve itself in a foreign conflict. Moreover, this would be a war that directly pits the United States up against not some secondary world power, but a European great power. Something the US has not done since World War II. Now, Biden said back in December, quote, The idea the United States is going to unilaterally use force to confront Russia invading Ukraine is not in the cards right now, but there will be severe consequences. Those consequences appear to be purely economic and political, with the most radical action proposed being to lock Russia out of various international organizations. This does not appear to intimidate the Russians, who have long expressed dissatisfaction with these Western-led global institutions, to the point of proposing the establishment of their own alternatives with various Eastern partners. As of late January, people are pointing to what has been perceived as a pivot by the United States from economic and political deterrence to proposals for increasing American military presence in Eastern Europe as a sign that direct American intervention is not off the table. But the reality of this would almost certainly be nothing more than a defensive tactic should the Russo-Ukrainian conflict spill over into the NATO states of Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, and the Baltics. And only in such a circumstance would war between Russia and the West break out. The Russians are very aware of this and likely will not make any provocations outside Ukraine to threaten an actual Western intervention. Truly, the only way by which Ukraine could derive direct military assistance from the West would be through alliances with individual states, say Poland or Romania. However, these states have very much to lose from such action and again risk the outbreak of a much larger war through NATO or no longer being guaranteed the security of NATO because they willingly made themselves a belligerent. As far as Western Europe goes, there is great hesitance to trigger a war with Russia, as such a war would see Europe heavily dependent upon American military involvement. As we've gone over before, American contributions to NATO have allowed Western Europe to dial back their own military spending, resting secure that the US will provide adequate support. However, that's no longer proving sufficient for this modern age, and the EU has thusly begun working toward establishing a united army of its own. But until that day comes, large-scale European military action against Russia is highly unlikely. Now, secondly, it's argued that if Russia were to conquer all or part of Ukraine, an insurgency would emerge and force Russia to withdraw. Russia sees Ukraine as a long-term investment. On a long enough timeline, Europe will develop an army. Ukraine will join the EU and NATO. And whether or not the United States are involved at all, a war between Europe and Russia may break out. When that day comes, Russia wants its defenses to stand as secure as possible, and that cannot be achieved with Ukraine protruding into its heartland as it currently does. If Russia must fight an insurgency for a year, five years, or ten years, it will do so to secure its border against the greater threat later down the line. It's what they've been doing since the fall of the Soviet Union. Russia recognizes that this is the time to stabilize and correct any weakness in their border, especially now while the great powers are so hesitant to fight. If the stakes are high, Russia might settle for annexing only lands with a significant Russian population. Holding these lands as opposed to the whole of Ukraine would be relatively simple, as the risk of a large insurgency forming is relatively low. Annexing the whole of Ukraine, including disputed Transnistria, would be the most difficult, as Ukrainians would have nowhere to go, radicalizing the population and contributing to a massive insurgency movement that would take years to quell. Strategically, Russia's best bet would be to annex the entire eastern portion of the country with the Dnieper River as the western frontier, providing the Russian south with a significant natural barrier against invasion. Western Ukraine remains autonomous and is able to pursue its European ambitions, while many in Eastern Ukraine flee westward. Certainly an insurgency could still emerge, but unlike a total conquest scenario, a conquest up to the Dnieper does not produce a massive disgruntled population with no choice but to fight. Most common people would opt to pick up the pieces of their life and move to the west, as would the government, eventually recognizing the east is not something worth warring over, though they might passively support a resistance movement until it was ultimately suppressed by Russia. Is the annexation of Ukraine inevitable? Perhaps not entirely, but it is very probable. Russia's motive and ability is simply too great for them not to act on this opportunity sooner rather than later. Though that being said, there is a very strong likelihood that a Ukrainian state in some form or another will survive and endure. The US of Z thanks you for watching. Support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.